As the election commission announced by-elections for 48 assembly constituencies and two Lok Sabha seats alongside the Maharashtra and Jharkhand elections, Kerala is also gearing up for its share of election fever. By-elections are scheduled for Palakkad and Cherakar assembly constituencies as well as the Wayanad Lok Sabha seat. Wayanad in particular is drawing national attention as Congress General Secretary Priyanka Gandhi prepares to make her electoral debut here. The seat became vacant after her brother Rahul Gandhi chose to retain Rai Bareilly following his dual victories in the 2024 Lok Sabha elections. The Congress announced Priyanka's candidacy back in June. Although Kwainad has long been a Congress stronghold, there is a significant interest in how Priyanka will connect with the voters and address their concerns. The region faces long-standing challenges, including frequent human-wildlife conflicts. Additionally, the victims of the devastating landslides of July 30 are expected to raise their grievances. Both the LDF and UDF plan to spotlight the union government's delayed financial assistance for Wayanad as a major campaign issue, which is likely to resonate in Palakkad and Chelakara as well. The Chelakara and Palakkad seats became vacant after their incumbents K. Radhakrishnan of CPIM and Shafi Parambil of Congress successfully contested the Lok Sabha elections. Just hours after the by-elections were announced, the Congress declared Youth Congress State President Rahul Mankutatil as the candidate for the Palakkad and former MP Remya Haridas as its candidate for Chelakara. The party was following a template that had worked successfully in the Trikakara and Pudupalli bipods. The signal intended to give was that the party is united and charging confidently ahead into the electoral fray. However, Within 12 hours, this swift move got an unexpected hit when civil servant turned politician Dr. P. Sarin, who had clearly been eyeing the Palakkad seat, raised the banner of revolt. Sarin, an MPPS doctor and former Deputy Accountant General of Kerala and Karnataka, resigned from the civil services in 2016 to pursue a full-time career in politics. In 2021, Congress fielded him in Ottapalam constituency. Although Sarin lost by over 15,000 votes, he did increase Congress vote share by 3.05%. In a press conference on October 16, Sarin criticized the Congress leadership for selecting Mangu Dadil as the candidate, implying that the Youth Congress state president was given the seat at the insistence of a single individual. He added that the party should not be held hostage by the interest of this individual, clearly referring to Shafi Parambe. Sarin also warned of a possible hurry and repeat in Palakkad, alluding to the BJP's recent growth in the constituency. Despite this, the Congress leadership stood firmly behind Mangu Tati, framing Sarin's actions as being against the AICC itself. Interestingly, during the press conference, there were hints that Sarin was leaning towards the left. He declared that the BJP would not win Palakkad this time. However, when asked by the media if this suggested a CPIM-backed candidate might win, Sarin gave a cryptic response fueling speculation about his potential candidacy with the CPIM support. Despite his public criticism, Congress leaders largely maintained a restrained stance and the party did not take immediate action against Sarin. By the morning of October 17, the picture became more clear. Sarin held another press conference where he accused opposition leader V.D. Satishan of promoting soft Hindutva and labelled Mangu Tatile wannabe Satishan. He went out to declare that he would now align himself with the left front and is ready to be the LDF candidate if CPIM asks. Notably, Sarin, who had been the Congress Party's digital media convener, had been clashing with the cyber comrades until recently. Ironically, the same cyber comrades who used to mock him by calling him Kotang Unyachin after a film character are now witnessing his shift to the left. The response from the state CPIM leadership indicates that the CPIM is going forward with the idea of fielding Sarin as their Palakkad candidate. Meanwhile, in Chelakara, former KPCC Secretary N.K. Suthi rebelled and announced his candidacy, accusing the Congress leadership of breaking their promise to him. Suthi will be contesting with the backing of PVN was DMK. Winning Palakkad and Chelakara is crucial for the Congress as it seeks to prove that the anti-incumbency sentiments against Pinarayi Vijayan government is still strong and the Congress party's success in the Lok Sabha elections wasn't a one-off. Priyanka Gandhi's presence in Wayanad may also boast a Congress chance in Palakkad and Chelakara. For the CPIM, winning Palakkad and Chelakara is crucial to demonstrate that. Despite a slew of allegations and controversies, the public still stands firmly behind the government and the party. Chelakara notably is a CPIM stronghold. And losing this uh, sitting seat 
would be a major blow to the party leadership and the CM. And the CPM is expected to operate with precision to avoid that. Palakkad, meanwhile, presents a different challenge. Since the last major delimitation, the Congress has consistently won here, while CPIM has placed third in the past two assembly elections. Backing Sarin as their candidate appears to be a safer move for the CPM. Even if the LDF finishes third once again, they can frame the narrative that it was an outsider, not a party member, who failed to deliver. For Sarin, however, this could be a make or break moment. If he runs and finishes in third place, it could spell the end of his political career. In 2011, CPIM had 35.82% vote share, which dropped to 25.64% in the 2021. Conversely, the BJP, which held just 19.86% of the vote in 2011, increased its share to 35.34% in 2021. The BJP has controlled the Palakkad municipality since 2015, a key advantage as they seek to make a breakthrough in the Kerala Assembly with a win in Palakkad. In early October, PV Anwar alleged that there was a CPIM BJP deal in Palakkad and Chelakara. If the outcomes favor the BJP in Palakkad and the CPIM in Chelakara, this allegation is likely to resurface for further discussion. All political fronts view these by-elections as a prelude to the upcoming local body and 2026 assembly elections, heightening the stakes. When voters in Wayanad, Palakkad and Chelakara head to the polls, each front will feel the pressure to secure a win.